G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Tuesday evening here in Australia, markets had a nice little bounce there, so up to 2.3 trillion, but look, we've seen this playing out for a while now. We go up a little bit, but then we go down, but not as high as before, and then we go down a little bit lower than where we went before. So is this finally going to play out, or is this just, again, another bit of a sort of a fake out where we're going to get a slowly downwards trending market and maybe even a big drop off? We'll just have to wait and see. All right, again, market is up 3.9%, so we got some nice movers, which is good, but what happens in the next 24 to 48 hours is really the big teller of the story. Bitcoin dominance still around 40%, gets up a little higher, gets down a little bit lower, but generally around there. Now, look, we do have some nice volume there, so people... People are definitely buying the dip but again I just get the feeling like they're buying at the bottoms and they're just looking for very small kind of gains a couple of percent and they're selling and watch it all go, and watching it go down even further that is my gut feeling at the moment now number one as I say every video I'm not offering you financial advice I'm not a financial advisor I'm just telling you what I see uh, at the moment and it's an opinion that is all I am no expert but if you've been watching my channel for a while, I'm guessing that you probably like some of my theories. Now, I must say that if you like my theories, that's great and I really do appreciate it. You know, hit the like button would really help. But don't follow me blindly. Don't follow anyone blindly. The person who's going to do the best with your money is most probably going to be you if you can make good decisions based on a whole lot of things. If you can't, then unfortunately you're probably going to get someone else to look after your money and that's fine. You know, they'll probably do better than their sort of average Joe. But if you've got a little bit of smarts about you, you can do, you know, well, I've got to be careful because not everyone can. That's the truth. Be very, very careful. But all I'm saying is, I see a market that's just still going down really is what I'm trying to say. I don't think we're going to get any big moves up anytime soon. There's just not much happening. But look, Bitcoin's Bitcoin and it will do the complete opposite of what everyone's thinking. So if everyone gets super bearish, it'll probably go bullish. And everyone gets super bullish, then it'll probably go bearish. And at the moment, people are looking fairly bullish considering. So we'll see if that lasts. Anyway, let's move on. All right, Bitcoin price just under 49000 So that's nice, but will it hold? And gas prices, $3.30. That is super low for Ethereum. All right, considering the market's up almost 4%, what's performed the best in the last 24 hours? All right, AVAX, there we go. Nice bounce by them, 13%. Helium, nearly 13%. Holo, not too far off. Rune Thor chain, done quite nice. Harmony, look, Polygon starting to heat up and, yeah, going to near new all-time highs, I'm pretty sure. So that's nice. Uh, sorry, there it is, $2.31. I think that's got to be close to uh, the highest it's been. There we go, $2.32. Shiba Inu making a bit of a move. Terra Luna has been on a tear for a long time. Got a story about that. FTX, look, even Chili's making a move, so that's very nice. Engine, very nice. All right, the gains are great, but what about the losses? Do we have many? Probably be a few. So H bars down, Celsius down. Look, minimal losses, which is nice. But as I said before, we've seen this time and time again for a while now. It'll look good today. We'll be up 3.9%. Yay. And then we're down by 4%. So let's go to the chart and have a look. Because this really is kind of telling exactly sort of where we are. All right. So I've had this chart going for a while. Now we've had this pump, but we still haven't broken any old all-time highs. We have sort of breached this little one here only just is it going to hold? I mean, look, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, so maybe that was. Maybe that was kind of the bottom right there. I mean, that's sort of a bottom, you could say, but that was a real quick wick. Maybe this was the bottom, and it's time for us to go up and get started again. I mean, Matic seems to be doing pretty well. I'm just not sold on it yet. That's really what it comes to. There's a bit of volume, which is nice, but we've seen big pumps like this. See, we got this, and it almost got up to, you know, the old all-time high, and then it rolled over. And then this... Uh, almost sort of got up to beating an over high, uh, a previous high, sorry, uh, and then rolled over. So, yeah, we've got to wait and see. I'm just, I'm hoping that we're at the bottom. I really am, like everybody. I'd love for us to keep going up. I'm just not sold on it. And hence why I'm not doing too much uh, with my money at the moment. It really is sitting on the sidelines 
uh, just earning some interest through things like BlockFi and Celsius and things like that. I'm not rushing out to buy anything. I might DCA in a little bit to things, but I'm mainly just focusing on Bitcoin at the moment. Like I said, Uniswap looks all right. I'll probably throw a few dollars at it. There might be a couple of other things that'll look all right, and I literally will only throw a few dollars at them just to wait and see if the market's going to change because I already have a good bag packed of things. It's not to say I can't get more, but there is a chart that's worrying me, and this is it. Here is the Bitcoin weekly chart. Now, this line here is the 21 exponential moving average. Now, whenever we're below it, and whenever we, sorry, whenever we go below it and we stay there for more than really sort of a week or two, we're in a bearish trend. We stayed above it, then we're under it, bearish trend. We got above it, then we're under, bearish trend. We got above it, then we're under it. We tipped right off it. So this is what happens. Now, I'm not saying we're in a bear market, but this is definitely bearish at the moment. And again, when we get above it, we stay above it. We have these big moves and then we go under it and we're under it for a couple of weeks. So again, a fake out under it for a couple of weeks fake out and then we had this and then we got above this and we've basically stayed above this right up until may of this year then we get above it bounce off it and then we fall below it so i am worried at the moment but i will say this i believe all the old four-year cycles and you know all the old chart patterns and even these 21 week EMA, emas they're they're not going to play out like they used to so I'm not too worried about this other than I do think there's more downside. Again, if I'm wrong, I will be happy to be wrong because I've got my bags packed. Like I'm ready to go, you know what I mean? If crypto wants to go crazy, super. And look, if it you know completely shits the bed as they say, well, I've taken some profits out and I'll just let them do their thing until you know the next sort of bull market comes along. Again, like I said, I'll, keep, I'll just focus on Bitcoin really if we are truly in a bear market throwing a couple of dollars at some projects I like here and there at different uh, points to see if you know I've been able to pick the bottom but mainly I'll just have cash sitting on the side working again in things like BlockFi and Celsius and things like that but again I'm not saying we're in a bear market and I don't think we are but I think all these old metrics that we used to be able to use uh, and they were really good indicators are now going to be not completely invalid this is still uh, letting us know when we're in bullish territory and bearish territory and we've currently spent three weeks under the 21 uh, week exponential moving average which is bearish but I want to go over here Bitcoin's bottom is not here yet and this is Peter Brandt he's come out and he's provided this chart so we go over here and have a look and I actually like this chart. He says here, implications of volume. Key bottoms in Bitcoin have occurred with high volume panic capitulation. We don't have panic capitulation yet. We really don't. That has yet to happen. Thoughts? And look at this. Look at this. He's got this line down here. And this is on the weekly. And I've got the weekly over here for you. And he is going down somewhere around about here. 29, almost sort of 30,000-ish, maybe a little bit sort of more up there. Have a look at that. He thinks we have to come back down here and bump on this. What did I say back in my thing? I reckon there's a good chance we come and cover off on this uh, CME gap that is down at 32,500 to 34,500. Again, I think this comes later in the year, like maybe February. I think there'll be a combination of things, accumulation, if you might like. Spot Bitcoin ETF gets approved. When everyone's full panicked and getting out and the smart money have simply been buying into the fear. Because I don't think we're at capitulation yet. This has scared people, but it hasn't scared people enough. This will probably really scare some people getting down here. And this is where you might see some real panic. And then you'll get those flash crashes down to here. And once it gets down to here, again, that CME gap, I think that'll get bought, bought pretty aggressively. Now, again, never financial advice. Could be completely wrong. And around about that time is probably when they'll come and say something like, oh, you know, spot Bitcoin ETF finally approved. Now, I'm not saying they're going to happen on exactly the same day, but I just think it'll probably be something thereabouts. And there's something else that I think that'll probably come around about the same time. Ethereum 2.0, testnet, uh, hopefully I say this right, Kintsugi goes live for preparation for merge. Now, we know ETH 2.0 is coming. 
sometime next year you know we thought it was going to be back in 2017 then we thought it was going to be too late 2021 and now we're being told somewhere around sort of june next year 2022 maybe it comes around about february and that's if this happens in february maybe this gets pushed out until march or something like that we'll have to wait and see but i just get the feeling like it's going to be right in the middle of all the fear and everything when everyone's basically packing their bags and getting out of here and panicking that will start to get all this news and then things will really start to move excuse me but again i'm never offering you financial advice please don't think well i'm going to get out of the market now and you know wait for it to go down to here because it may not go down to here and again if it does i'm not going to feel great about it because i've still got a lot of money uh, invested in crypto but I've got some sitting on the side that I'll gradually sort of buy into this as well. And if I am completely wrong and it just rockets up, well then sweet. I've got, you know, like I said, I've got my bags packed, I'm ready for it. But I just get the feeling like we're going to see more downwards action. I don't think we're at that complete fear yet. We are definitely at fear. You go the fear and greed index and it's uh, quite low, but yeah, not at the kind of real panic lows. I think we've got to come down and test some definitely uh, below 40 levels, whether it's just under 40, you know, 39 uh, ish thousand. But I don't know if we can get down to there, it's not too much of a stretch to push it down again into that CME gap. All right, last story but not least. So Terra becomes second largest DeFi protocol, surpassing Binance Smart Chain. Here's a theory I have I think DeFi will get quite big in a bear market. Because people will, so it'll be funny. I don't think we're going to have the bear markets where everything just kind of goes to zero. Oh, not to zero, sorry. I mean, goes down together. I think DeFi platforms will do much better during, uh, what you call it, uh, bearish trends. Because everyone's going to take those dollars, you know, cash out into dollars. And then they're going to want to find places to get yield. And then once that changes around... Then all of a sudden, like we saw the DeFi summer, it died off and everything else is pumped. And now everything else is sort of dying off a little bit and is DeFi maybe getting ready to pump. I think that might be the sign of where markets are in the future. We'll have to wait and see. Is a DeFi pump going to be the indication of the market is kind of dying off and people are getting scared, putting their money into DeFi, collecting that yield? Then they're going to wait for things to be more positive when things start to bubble up. And then all of a sudden DeFi gets hit because everyone's like, it's a new bull market. So they take their cash out of the DeFi projects, they go down and everyone jumps back into buying, you know, the next best hottest thing. That is something I'm keeping uh, an eye out for because yeah, it's just, it's not the same. The markets have changed. The big players are here. Adoption is here. Now, not, we haven't got the mass adoption yet. That is going to be a process. It doesn't just happen overnight, but it is slowly starting to happen. So the four year cycles, I think it's fairly confirmed that they're dead unless 69,000 was the top and then now we're in the bear market. But it's just, it's not playing out the way it has before. So the four year cycle still could be sort of partly true, but I just get the feeling like it's done. And I think when DeFi protocols really fire up and are doing the best, I think, I think that will be like the bear market until things start to turn around and people have got enough yield and then they wanna go looking for better opportunities. That is a thesis of mine. We'll have to wait and see whether it plays out to be true or not. I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you think that might be an indication of where the market's at? If it's bearish, people are moving into DeFi to get yield. If it's bullish, people are moving out of DeFi and again, looking to get you know those exponential, exponential gains that they can get from investing uh, in projects themselves. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Some nice gains there, which is good, but will they last? That's the question, and I'll see you next time.